Fed speak is complicated, but we do know this one thing. When Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke speaks, Wall Street listens. Here he is from Wednesday. The Federal Open Market Committee concluded a two-day meeting earlier today. As you already know from our statement, the committee decided, starting next month, to modestly reduce the pace at which it is increasing the size of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. Yes, to modestly reduce the pace of blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, uh, one thing. Ben Bernanke was, was trying to say that beginning in January, the Federal Reserve will cut back on the stimulus money it's been pumping out to prop up the economy, but gradually, really, really gradually. Okay, no one knew how traders on Wall Street were going to react to this idea that Bernanke was taking away part of their security blanket. But Wall Street actually liked what it heard a lot. The Dow Jones Industrial Average skyrocketed 150 points immediately after the policy announcement and then closed to around 293 points up for the day. The S&P 500 gained nearly 30 points and the Nasdaq finished 46 points higher on Wednesday. And while all of this is great news, particularly for stockholders, and is a result of the Fed's belief that our economy is doing better, the Fed is taking a very, very slow approach when it comes to weaning our fragile economy off the stimulus bottle. So what does this move say about where the Fed thinks our economy is now, and more importantly, where it is going? At the table, Carmen Wong, Wong Ulrich, host of <laughs> Marketplace Money on APM. Lawrence Michelle, president of e the Economic Policy Institute. Ovik Roy, senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute. And Lisa Cook, associate professor of economics and international relations at Michigan State University. Participants see the unemployment rate, which was 7% in November, as continuing to decline. The central tendency of the projections has the unemployment rate falling to between 6.3 and 6.6 percent in the fourth quarter of 2014, and then to between 5.3 and 5.8 percent by the final quarter of 2016. So, Ovik, it's in the right direction, and but to Larry's point, what's now holding back the economy is not so much Fed policy, because Fed policy is pushing in the direction of lower unemployment. It's now a political problem where we cannot get stimulus into the economy, and that's because conservatives in Congress are refusing to do their part. So can you explain why, given all of the statistics, given everything that the Fed is doing, pushing the pedal to the metal slowly or pulling it off slowly, why can't we have the political will to do the other piece, to have Congress do its part and to stimulate the economy? Yes. So Larry made the key point, which is that the tapering is getting all the headlines, but actually the key thing and the reason why Wall Street was so happy was because Bernanke said we're going to keep the discount rate, the interest rates, really low for a really long time, even when unemployment goes to 6.5 percent eventually. And the thing is, it's not clear that the Fed policy has actually had that much impact on unemployment. It's more of these fiscal issues that are going to have more of an impact. So, you know, the Fed has made the banks really happy. The banks are making enormous amounts of money. If you own a house, if you have real estate holdings, if you own the stock, if you own bonds, you're doing really well, but, but it's oh, not. Wait, wait, we're doing all, and all that's happening while the Affordable Care Act exists. How can that be? I don't think the Affordable <laughs> Care Act was supposed to destroy and kill the economy. It sounds like you're saying that the economy is actually improving despite the presence of well, Obamacare. I'm saying that the investor class is very happy. <laughs> What's happening with people in, at the lower end of the scale is a little different story. So they're going to hopefully have better health care, but uh, the impact on hiring is a, is a different matter because of things like the employer mandate. So there are things that we can do to actually improve the degree to which employers have an incentive to hire low skilled workers or well, low see, wage then that workers. Is the question. Yeah. What, what is holding back businesses from using, as you said, using those gift cards? Because that does, right. there some, it seems to be a disconnect. Businesses right. have more and more profit, but they're not spending that in terms of hiring. The one reason the economy grew very slowly in 2013 is because we've had this austerity. It hurt growth by about one and a half percentage points. One reason people are optimistic about 2014 is austerity is only going to hurt 0.4%. Right. Okay. It's so hurt it's going to it, they're going to the, the austerity is going to stop beating up the economy as much. Therefore, we'll do a little bit better. But in fact, we should have a situation where we're actually helping. We're actually helping. And we have very short time. I do want to let Ovik answer for every single conservative on earth. <laughs> what is this obsession with austerity? It has hurt the British economy. It has held back the U.S. economy. Why are we still even talking about pursuing an austerity strategy, Paul Ryan and others in Congress? There's different kinds of austerity. There's a tax, uh, a tax increase based austerity, and there's a spending cut based austerity. So the more it's driven by tax increases, the economic performance is harmed. I want to get back no, to one point that Larry said. No, but we've been doing said. spending cut austerity. I want to stay with that point. Just 
for one second. We've been we've been focusing on we spending. We have been, and our, 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 economic, our economy. Our economic performance it's, has been better. We've had a recovery. Back our economy. So I, I, that's where we disagree. But I, I want to say one thing about what Larry said, which is that that Janet Yellen's going to tackle bubbles through regulation. The Federal Reserve policy has been creating the bubble. The reason why the stock market is doing so well, the bond market's been doing so well, real estate's been doing so well, is because of monetary policy. And unfortunately, Janet Yellen's philosophy is to really extend that. And I think that's what's disappointing. Okay, what well, the concern is that a lot of people I'm have about sure the policy. I'm quite sure there's a lot of debate that people have with what the point you just made. And we have, uh, you know, roughly two and a half percent of the workforce unemployed more than 27 weeks, which is some of the highest uh, on on record, and far double the rate at which at any other point we've ever suspended having extended unemployment benefits. Right. It's based cruel, lack of compassion, and, as my colleague here says, really economically stupid. And, and I mean, and the thing is, Lisa, because once you've been unemployed for a long time, it's actually right. harder and harder to find a job the Absolutely. longer those weeks tick out. So if you That's are right. on long-term unemployment, by default, it's harder for you to find a job. Right, exactly. And when you show up at an employer, the employer knows you've been out of work for some time. The employer is going to think your skills have probably atrophied. You've been at home watching the Flintstones. What do you know about your job? So it's really hard to convince an employer that you're up to date, you're in the game, that you have the will to, to work. I mean, and it's, it's, it's pervasive. And this is just a, a, it's probably going to be a structural problem for some time. And yet, Elvik, <laughs> at these moments I turn to you. This is what Rand Paul, um, who is, I guess you could call it a libertarian, sort of conservative, Tea Party conservative, had to say about this very issue about long-term unemployment benefits. He said, quote, I do support unemployment benefits for the 26 weeks they're paid for. If you extend it beyond that, you do a disservice to these workers. When you allow people to be on unemployment insurance for 99 weeks, you're causing them to become part of this perpetual unemployed group in our economy. Huh? Yeah, so that's true. So the longer, just like you were talking about, the longer people are on unemployment benefits and the longer they're out of the workforce, the, more, the less the employers are likely to hire them. And employer surveys consistently show this. So the answer is to cut off their entire income? And then how no. does that help them find a job? The, 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 there are other federal programs that help people who so are unemployed saying, besides unemployment on, benefits. Put people really? on <laughs> welfare programs <laughs> There's 132 anti-poverty programs sponsored so wait, 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 by the federal just, government that spend over a trillion dollars a year. I want to back up for a second because conservative doctrine is to oppose those programs too. Rand Paul and others, they're not in favor of what they consider welfare, but you're saying take people off of unemployment insurance and put them on welfare. Yeah. Give them a better incentive to seek work and decrease the barriers what, to hiring. Is, decrease the barriers to hiring that, that prevent people from actually hiring people who are unemployed. I'm confused. How does putting somebody on a federal welfare program because Give you, them more incentive to work than having them on unemployment, unemployment insurance. insurance. I don't understand. Because actually, you can only get the checks if you prove if you're that you're looking for a job. A job. Prove right. so if you strong don't word. have Prove is a strong word. You listen, have to check there a box. Is, yeah, yes, you, you have to check a box. But I'll tell you this. If they don't, right, let's say the, the benefits go out, they don't uh, accountable to anybody, right? So it actually encourages them to look for work. And let's talk about the, the simple fact and common sense is if you have one job for every three people, so either they're going to go on welfare. Where are they going to go? Yeah, let's, let's, let's get back gonna... to the economic point here. So if you are on unemployment insurance and then you get a job, you lose that benefit. That's what creates a disincentive to seek work. If the benefit is consistent, regardless of whether you have a job or not, you have more of an incentive to actually seek work. That doesn't but actually is, make rational but, sense. Go but, on. But, 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 and and it, it makes logical sense. The only thing that I would argue is that this flies in the face of the facts. Jesse Rothstein has his great paper on Jesse Rothstein at uh, Berkeley has his great paper that shows that unemployment benefit extension does not lead to unemployment. These people are not lazy. It, 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 it drives you crazy. It's it, it, well, well, whatever it is, I mean, but, 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 but with the latest data, with the with right. the latest data, the best work done flies in the face. Of empirics. And, and I go it's, back it's to, and we have to go to break, but I do go back to the question of what you are essentially saying is in order to incentivize somebody to seek work, you have to cut off their entire income them. or put them on welfare. The or put them on welfare. Decrease that doesn't the make sense. That doesn't make sense, but we're going to keep talking up next.